Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we find ourselves in Michigan, where a uh, no-nonsense judge deals with a sovereign citizen who, well, just can't seem to get anything right. And, uh, well, he almost ends up incriminating himself toward the end on some for something else. And, well, the judge has to put an end to that right then and there before he goes off the deep end. So let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Peltola. Can you hear me adequately? Yes, I can, Honor. How are you doing? Good, thank you. How are you today? Not too bad. Feeling a little rough, sore from being in a holding cell three days, but other than that, I'm okay. All right, let me call you, matter so we're on the record, please. People of the state of Michigan versus Drew James Peltola, 247819 SM. Mr. Peltola appears from the Dickinson County Jail. Counsel at first appearance is Abby Anderson, who appears via video Zoom. And the prosecution is not here today of their own choosing. Uh, Mr. Pelta, before we went on the record, indicated he could hear me adequately. And he was all right, other than being sore from being in the holding cell for three days. In respect to the matter, then, Mr. Peltola, um, I do have an advice of rights here with your signature. Um, I do see a, it looks like the copyright insignia. I know that we have. Um, Wait a second. Did this guy uh, actually try to copyright his name? Yeah, uh, I don't think that's a thing, dude. Uh, there are other things that be, can, can be copyrighted, such as movies and other things like brands, but names? No, I don't think so. Discuss the issue of the sovereign citizen. In the past, Mr. Peltola, can you tell me what your position is today, please? I have to tell me what your full legal name is, if you would. Okay, uh, I'm Appalachian, known as all capital letters, Drew James Peltola, with a common law copyright as a sui juris, human as a non-citizen, a not American national. That's defined in the United States Code. I'd like to have my lawyer finish talk, because she told me not to talk unless she could talk first. Well, dude, it's a good idea that your lawyer gave you not to talk, because all that was a bunch of word salad that uh, many of us are going to need a citation on. Because where does it say that in any U.S. code? All right, thank you. Go ahead, Ms. Anderson. Thank you, Your Honor. I have discussed these matters with Mr. Peltola. First, he agrees to be referred to as Mr. Peltola for purposes of these hearings. We have gone over both the advice of rights for misdemeanor and bond violation. He indicated he understood and signed both. Um, as to the allegations, we went over the maximum penalties. We would waive the formal reading. He is tendering not guilty pleas and requested an attorney. Ms. Mashik Lassala has assigned Nancy Schaub to represent him. All right, very well. As indicated by Ms. Anderson, Mr. Peltola is, has agreed for purposes of uh, his criminal prosecution to be referred to as Drew James Peltola, his position in respect to how he should be recognized legally has been stated for the record and is preserved for the record as well as stated on the uh, advice of rights form concerning both the general misdemeanor advice of rights um, although the bond violation advice of rights doesn't so indicate the court will recognize this position for purposes of both advice of rights Concerning the matter then, um, is this a good mailing address for you, Mr. Peltola on River Street in Niagara? Yes, Your Honor. Um, I'm just trying to move back into Michigan. So I've been working and I, that's the address that I use because that's my domicile. I always return to every day or once a week or whatever. Because the Michigan residents, I'm not even sure. Um, I would not like to talk about that in court, but I'm trying to move back into Michigan. I'm just having a heck of a time doing it. All right. So this is what I'm going to do then, Mr. Peltola, over there. Let's see if I have one in my file first.
Miss Anderson, I don't see a waiver of extradition. It sounds like he's going to go need to go back and forth to Wisconsin, and we'll address that momentarily. In respect to the matter, though, Mr. Peltola, there is a waiver of extradition form over there at the jail. I'm going to have to have you sign that if you need to go into Wisconsin as part of this. In regard yeah, to the matter, then what? Um, how do you want me to sign this? I'm, if you want my copyright, do you want me sui juris? Just so you understand, like I wasn't trying to harm you or any other woman. Well, I don't. Um, I don't do feel that. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do you want? Go ahead. Do you want my copyright on this? Do you want me as a human or me as a sui juris, non-citizen national? Then allow me to translate what this moron is saying into uh, the average sovereign citizen mumbo jumbo because this is a bit different. Uh, he's basically asking, "Do you want me to sign this?" as my corporate self or my living self, which is still a bunch of bullshit to begin with because there is no corporate self. There is only yourself. So therefore, just sign your damn name on it, you moron. I just want your signature and the date and whatever you want to put in addition to that is fine with me. All right, thank you. Can I have a pen? Uh... Your Honor, while Mr. Peltola is signing that, we did discuss the waiver of extradition. He just wanted that answer clarified prior to signing, but he is aware of what the waiver of extradition is. Very good. Thank you. All right. I'll enter not guilty, please, on behalf of Mr. Peltola. Ms. Anderson indicates that he's qualified and he is being assigned by MIDC. Ms. Schaub, we're going to set bond violation hearing. We might as well do the pretrial at the same time. And a jury trial as follows. Do you want the jury trial? Yes, just, just to be safe. Okay. Pretrial conference and bond violation hearing on February 21st at 1.45 p.m. Jury trial, March 8th at 9 a.m. All right, you'll get these dates in writing, Mr. Peltola. In respect yes. to the waiver of extradition, then I'm... I want to go over it with you briefly as well. All right, cool. In I respect, can wait. You want me to stop filling this out? Um, really, all you need to do, yeah, go ahead. You finish, and then I'll go, and then I'll talk. You let me know when you're ready. I'll just sign it real quick on the bottom of it, and they can take care of the rest of it. I'll sign it properly. I wonder what kind of jippery she's putting on that paper right there, because when I sign anything, it generally just takes me two or three seconds to put my John Hancock on there and be done with it. It doesn't take me, well, two or three minutes to do so. Uh, the bottom law might be wrong. Uh, it's been a while since I've read the Unified Corp, but I believe this is right. I signed it for you correctly. So. All right. Perfect. Okay. All right. If you give that to the jailer, Mr. Peltel, I want to go over with you what it means to sign that waiver. I know we've done this before, but I'll just refresh your memory. Oh. And let me start by saying so long as you come back to court voluntarily for all your court appearances, this does not become oh, yeah. relevant. But if you don't come back to court, let's say, for example, you stayed in Niagara or somewhere else like that, normally you're entitled to what's called an extradition hearing before you are returned to Michigan to fight the charges that you didn't come back to court for. Yes. Under an extradition hearing umbrella, you have the right to an open court hearing. You have the right to have a lawyer at that hearing. And if you're indigent or without funds, one is assigned for you. The purpose of an extradition hearing allows you to challenge the legality of your arrest and return to Michigan, for example. You could demand issuance and service of a Michigan governor's warrant for your arrest. You have the right to obtain a writ of habeas corpus. Like I said, all to challenge the legality of your arrest and return to Michigan. When I you sign resist, a waiver, but... what? I, I said I won't resist, ma'am. Never all mind. Right, I'm, just explaining. I just, no, I'm no. just explaining to you what that document is that you're signing, okay, for the record. That's all. I'm not suggesting, implying, or anything else. I'm just explaining, all right? Thank you. All right, so when you sign that waiver then, what that means is 
And like I said to start with, so long as you come back to court, everything is hunky dory or everything is all right. But if you don't come back, when you sign that waiver, you have given up your right to that type of a hearing that I just explained. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. All right. So that's what that means. So when I'm setting bond, I need that form back because I'm going to do the following in respect to your bond. And this can cover both the bond violation and the underlying charge of disorderly. All right, first off, you must sign a waiver of extradition as a condition of your bond. So long as you do, you can go back and forth between Michigan and Wisconsin for residency. Are there other reasons, Mr. Peltola? Do you work there? Uh, do you have court appearances, medical treatment, family visitation, anything like that? Uh, my family visitation almost every day, my mother. And I have right. uh, court issues that got pushed back, I believe, like five months, six months, something like that. I don't right, find so the exact data. Residency, court appearances, family visitation. If it expands beyond that, talk to your lawyer first, okay? Yes, Your Honor. All right. You are not to purchase, possess, or consume alcohol or non prescribed controlled substances. You must submit to random PBTs and drug screens as a condition of your release. Don't go into yes. businesses that sell alcohol for use inside, such as bars and taverns. Um, now, do you have a medicinal marijuana card? I do not. I, I did at one time, Your Honor, but at the current moment, I do not. All right, so for the moment then, Mark, uh, both medicinal and recreational marijuana you send possession are prohibited until further order of the court. That changes, you make sure and get it to your lawyer who would bring the issue to the court if you got your card back. In regard to the matter then, um, stay off of the property of 1714 East 7th Avenue in Norway. Yes, Your Honor. Um, do not engage in any assaultive, threatening, harassing or intimidating behavior towards any person while you are on bond. If you relocate for any reason, you must provide the court with an updated address and phone number within seven days of any change. I am going to set the bond. All right, so you are in one of those unique positions, Mr. Peltola, where you have come before the court for your arraignment already behind you or what you're being arraigned on is both the underlying charge and a bond violation. So usually people will have an underlying charge and then whatever, week two, three later, they come back with the bond violation. And when people are arraigned, I always give them a talk and tell them that if you come back with a bond violation, you're going to make it really hard for me to say, gee, I should let you back out into the community again. You, however, have not had that talk. You are having it today, and you are having it on both the underlying charge and the bond violation. So my pep talk is this, Mr. Peltola. I'm going to set the bond accordingly and give you the benefit of the doubt. But if you come back in here with another violation, I'm going to say, gee, Mr. Peltola, I had the talk with you, and you went out and did the same thing I told you not to do. So I'm telling you, don't violate your bond and make me have a reason to keep you in custody pending resolution of your case. I'll set your bond right now at 1000 PR. That's on both the bond violation and the underlying charge. They're going to let you back out, Mr. Peltola. Don't go back out and start drinking and do this again, because like I said, you'll leave me no choice. All right. Cool. Oh, Your Honor, I, honest God, I'm not even on drugs anymore. I wasn't sick. The only thing, the only reason. Hold on, um, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Nope. I can see Miss uh, Anderson almost doing cartwheels back there. She does not want you to talk until you have a chance to talk to your lawyer. Is that right, Miss Anderson? That is correct, Your Honor. Thank you. Yeah, good idea, dude. Maybe you should keep your mouth shut until you actually discuss things with an attorney unless you're going to go pro se because anything you say right now can and will be used against you in a, a court after this i mean good grief dude are you that freaking stupid what the hell am i saying of course he's that damn stupid he is a self-proclaimed 
sovereign citizen. So, yeah, he is that damn stupid. All right, Mr. Peltola, do you understand? She wants you to talk to your lawyer before you tell me anything, all right? Yes, I understand, Ms. Lacoste, or Judge Lacoste. Thank you, Mr. Peltola. We will see you soon. Your bond will come over, your writing dates, your lawyers. Make sure you call her um, when you get out and, you know, have a meeting with her. All right, Mr. Peltola? Yes, Your Honor. All right, anything else on this file then, Ms. Anderson? No, thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Have a good day, Mr. Peltola. Well, let's just hope that he goes full sovtard by the next court hearing, and then that way he can go full pro se and then go full moron and uh, inc continue to incriminate himself like he almost did in this particular situation, dude. Next time, listen to a lawyer and keep your dang mouth shut. That way, you won't let the cat out of the bag out for anything else that you might have done in your life. So at any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Dude, so there's no way I can get in, bro? Come on, I'll put you on my YouTube. But shut up, Wesley. You gotta put signs up, ma'am, if it's- Are you Glenn Serio? Who's that?